Hello everyone, welcome to Purposely Design. I pray all is well with you all. Um, first and foremost, I just, I want to sing this, a little bit of this song. I know this is not my song. Um, and uh, I don't know how it's going to come out, but I'm going to sing it anyway because God put it on my heart. And so, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come on in, take a seat, inhabit our praise, God of Zion, Judas Lion, we acknowledge your presence, O oh Lord, hallelujah, thank you, O oh God, thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence, thank you, O oh God, hallelujah, for your spirit, Oh, God, we magnify you on today. We give you praise and we give you glory. God, we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this hour. Thank you, Father, for giving us power, love, and a sound mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I pray right now, Lord God, that your will will be fulfilled in the earth on today. Hallelujah. Lead us, oh God, through your spirit. Because if you don't lead us, God, we will be... Uh, uh, made us stray, Father. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, that you are able to do that exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to your power, Father. I thank you that your power worketh in us mightily in the Oh God, I thank you, Lord God, how much you love us, your love towards us, oh God. Hallelujah, how I go from everlasting to everlasting god i give you praise i give you glory lord god i just pray right now that oh god all those that are listening lord god that you will begin to open up their ears to hear hallelujah that you will begin to open up the eyes of the blind to, in order for them to be able to see holy spirit Open up, hallelujah, the hearts of your people that they'll be able to be receptive to your will and to your way. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and open up the minds of your people, hallelujah, that they can comprehend, hallelujah, the things of you, for your ways are higher than ours, and your thoughts, hallelujah, are higher. So, God, we reverence you on today. We reverence the fact that your thoughts are higher than ours. In order for us to be able to see things the way that you see them, hallelujah, I pray right now that you will begin to elevate and to bring us up higher in you. In the mighty name of Jesus and I her unity, oh God, I pray, Father, for unity, oh God, in the saints, oh God, that you will bring us into one body, oh God. Hallelujah, Father, I thank you because you're not the author of confusion, oh God, but you are the author of unity. Hallelujah, you do bring forth unity. Hallelujah, even in your body, God. That's why we are the body, because we are made one. Hallelujah, through your spirit. Hallelujah, and I thank you father for sin in christ oh god that we will become one oh god in you either the ashantara bahaha either the under the bahaki della the ashantara diete oh god i thank you oh god hallelujah for drawing us nigh unto you hallelujah not by might nor by power but by your spirit holy spirit reign rule and rest up in this podcast on today oh god i thank you oh god for busting forth the air ways, oh God. Hallelujah. Breaking it forth, oh God, as you part of the Red Sea. Hallelujah. That you begin to part. Oh, the airways on today in the mighty name of Jesus, that your will and your way and your word, hallelujah, will go back. That your will and your way and your word, hallelujah, will go forth on today, oh God, and bust forth the Ashanta Bakanda de E. Oh God, and Brashid the Bakinda de A. Break it at Baha in the mighty name of Jesus. Break forth, oh God, hallelujah, through these airways, hallelujah, and bring forth your word. Hallelujah, bring forth your word on today. God, I thank you 
Father, every netty as son that I bacanda of the air. Oh, yes, God, can't eat that I bacanda of the air. In the heart, in the bahisa that I bacanda of the air day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, that you are bringing forth. Breaking forth, breaking forth, hallelujah, even in the eyes of the Rabakanta of the air. Oh, so that Rabakanta of the air. Oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you're doing. And I thank you for what you're about to do. Even now, God, hallelujah, that your word is coming forth now, even now. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. For saturate this air line, airways. Uh, saturate these airways on today. I don't know why I was going to say airline. <laughs> hallelujah. Airline. Okay, Lord. We're going higher in you today. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, I receive that. In Jesus' mighty name. But hallelujah that your your word, oh God, will come forth, oh God, hallelujah, with purity, hallelujah, and that people will receive what you are saying on today. And so, God, I give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah. That's the way that the Lord, look, I, I just really, truly believe in going with the flow of the Holy Spirit. As he leads, I will follow and I pray that you uh, follow him as well, you know, to just be obedient to the way that he chooses to go. Hallelujah. We don't always have to do things um, the way that uh, we normally do things. We just, you know, it's awesome when we allow God to just reign, rule, and abide, even in the airway. You know, however, howsoever, I don't care what platform he chooses to give or put us up on or in. Just allow his spirit to move you in the way that he would have for you to go. And just be obedient to Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. He knows how to please the Father. Hallelujah. We don't know how to please the Father unless Holy Spirit help us to please the Father. And I thank him that he's allowing us to please the Father on today. Hallelujah. In the way that he would have for us to go. Oh, my God. God is awesome. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. I don't know. I just wanted to rest in this place right now. Hallelujah. His spirit is just ever present. And I thank him for what he's doing even now on today. I'm, I promise I just thank him. You just never know how he's going to move you. You just never know, you know, how he's going to bring forth his word. You just don't know. And so I'm telling you, you just have to go by the Holy Spirit. You can't go by what it looks like. Like uh, Karen Clark Shears said, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we, we can't go by what things look like. Even though they look a certain way, man, so many people get deceived by what it looks like. Get deceived because someone else comes in and, and begins to speak about certain things and they look different or or that the, the way that they come off seems different or you know they they start hearing something new and it, you know we don't want to be like those that uh every time you know something new comes about we're just fascinated by that thing instead of saying holy spirit is this of you is this is this what you're are you leading me this way you know what i'm saying we don't do that a lot of times we just go with it because it's some it's, it sounds good. Sounds like something that we've never heard before. You know what I'm saying? It sounds like people are bringing light to something, but are they really? Because some things that look like light may just be bondage. And so we have to be very careful as to what and who we listen to because we don't ever know um the reasoning behind what they're saying, what they're doing, you know, 
we unless we hope we ask the Holy Spirit. And I, you know, I ask you to, if you have any questions, to ask Holy Spirit, is this of you? And I guarantee you, He will tell you. Especially you have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. You have a relationship with the Father. The Father don't want you to be blind. Guarantee you, He don't want you to be blind. All you have to do is go to Him and say, Father, is this of you? Is this of you, Father? And I guarantee you, He'll tell you. Hallelujah. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask. Or even think according to his power. And I mean, we have to reverence his power in this hour. We have to reverence his power in this hour. So that we don't be led astray. Amen. I'm going to start today with um, Acts 17. And what I'll be talking about is Iranius teaching. Uranus teaching. I'm going to start with 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth my God my God uh, yes my God thank you Lord Jesus Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 17. Once again, we're still talking about Uranus teaching. Acts 17 and verse 22, it states, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God, that made the world, and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their the bounds of their habitation that they seek they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from any every one of us so he's not far from anybody the bible 
also says 28 for in him and this is how he's not far because the word says right here for in him we live and move and have our being as certain of your own poets have said for we are we are also his offspring amen for as much then as we are the offspring of god we ought not to think that we that the Godhead is like unto gold, silver, or stone, driven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath risen him from the dead. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, um, as, as I was um praying those two scriptures came to me and um uh, about Uranus teaching Uranus teaching is is the subject but uh you know I believe that God was using these as an example and letting us know that I'm bringing you to the father I know you know what you 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 may have in your mind of what God looks like, but you know, let's get closer to Him. Let's see what He really looks like. You know what I mean? What well, let's let's see what um, how deception is creeping in, and how the enemy would use Iranian teaching to bring us into captivity. With the enemy's plans versus God's plans for us. So, Iranius means especially being or containing an error. And and Paul, when I go back to Paul, when he talked to those uh, in Mars Hill, he was basically letting them know, you are erring right now by you put putting and entertaining this um this with this inscription talking about the unknown god okay so since you don't know who he is let me let me show you who he is and he began to talk about who god is who god is and let them know he ain't far from you and let them know he lives inside of you. You know what I mean? He broke that thing down real well. Real well. And I mean, my God. Mm. Some of us are erring unknowingly. And, uh, uh, you know, some by habit. And some by men. Like we were, was reading about men, women, you know, silly women being, um, it says silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. And in that same scripture, which was Second Timothy 3. He began to talk about the times that we were coming into. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now we, we've we read on the perilous times multiple times. But he was letting us know 
the type of things that we would see. And he began to talk about people with nat uh, without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers, and a lot of these things we see today. High-mindedness and lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. There's a lot of, thing, a lot of people that have gotten so caught up in other things that they put God at the bottom instead of bringing him to the top. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And he let us know, turn away from those people. There's people that have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power of God. And that's when he got into the silly women and and how, you know, they're ever learning and not the silly women, but so much the, the these people that are that have this form of godliness that they are ever learning and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. My God, help us not to be amongst those that are ever learning and never coming into the knowledge of the truth. Verse 8 of that same scripture says, Now as Janus and Jambers withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds. See, this is how you know when talking about the women. He's now talking about these men that are going around and, you know, going into to the houses of women that are silly, laden with sins, and laid, led away with diverse lusts and, you know, begin... To lead them. And it says. So do these men. <clears throat> Just like them. Um, that withstood Moses. So do these. Also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds. Reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest manifest unto all men as theirs also was. So just like um, God showed forth Janus and Jambres who withstood Moses how he, he, he showed what these people were doing so will he do with these men. Same thing. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men. Everybody's going to know what they're doing, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which which came unto me at Antioch. At Icanium, at Lestra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me, my God. And then he told you, he said, yea, and all that will live godly. In Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. So don't think it's strange if you're suffering persecutions right now. Know that if you are living godly in Christ Jesus, that you're going to also suffer persecutions. He said, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So 
know that deceivers had to become this like Eve. They too had to be deceived. Eve was deceived, and so was um. So she began to say things to her husband in order to will him in as well because deception was at work. And so you got to know when deception comes in, he puts you to work. He he begins to work your mind. And, it, and he will deceive you. And then through you, he will deceive others. And so really we're we're uh, acknowledging in deception right now um, and seeing what deception does. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. So I need you to remember and to continue in those things that you've learned. And have been assured of. And knowing of. Whom. You learned them. Remember who gave you this. Who, who, who taught you this. And that. From a child. Thou hast known the holy scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise. Into salvation. Through faith. Which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture. Is given by inspiration inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the men of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works Amen Once again we're still talking about erroneous teachings so it's like I believe God is it's like um going through and kind of taking the scales off, kind of showing you how this thing works and how you know the enemy this is you know we're in perilous times today and and because of where we're at, this is what's happening, this is what's creeping in, these things are calling. You know, trying to take over and um, cause people to err. As we said, erroneous means especially being or containing an error. So let's get to why, you know, what led me here. So I was driving and I was on my way to work. And Holy Spirit brought back a conversation I had with a man about law. You know, he believes we're still under the law and that Christ fulfilled the law. But that didn't change the fact that we're still supposed to abide by it and observe all the holy days. As I was um, revisiting this thing in my mind, I clearly heard the Holy Spirit say to me, this was erroneous teaching. So that's when I looked up erroneous, which once again stated, especially being or containing an error. So I said, oh, wow. And this reminded me of Matthews 23 and 1. Matthews 23 and 1 says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude, and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit at Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not after do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their uh, flatteries and enlarge their borders, the borders of their garments. 
and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces in the market sorry and to be called of men rabbi rabbi he said but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even christ and all ye are brethren but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe in 15. We're going to skip down from 13 to 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte and when he is made, you make him two folds more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. See the greed that came in. Which is why you can't serve God and mammon. Because when you see the gold, you want more. You're debtor now. Because you swore by the gold. My God. And then when you keep reading that, um, it'll go into deeper depths. But we're going to go to Matthew 21 and 13. And it says, And said unto them, It is written in my house, shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And so, Holy Spirit, this last, uh, I want to say, I, I don't know if I was dreaming or I believe this was a dream, but some kind of way the Holy Spirit was talking to me either in my sleep. Um, last night, and he brought that, scripture to me and he was telling me that you make it a den of thieves when you agree with the enemy when you agree agree with the lie when you agree with every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God this is why 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is why we have to judge things righteously. St. John 7 and 24 says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. In order to judge righteously, you have to study. Second Timothy 2 and 15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So what I saw is that people, as far as this erroneous teaching was concerned, people is using Matthews 5 and 17 in order to cause those who don't know any better to live out the law. And Matthews 5 and 17 says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, to destroy but to fulfill. But to fulfill, my God. And, um, I saw where people have taken a hold of that word fulfill and have ran with it. Fulfill means bring to completion or reality, achieve or realize something desired, promised, or predict predicted. 
Fulfill also means carry out a task, duty, or role as required, pledged, or expected. Fulfill, which really highlights to me, bring to completion. My God, or reality is what that first definition said. You know, the word says in Romans 10 and 4, it says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. My God. Hebrews 8 and 13 says, In that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first wax old. Now that that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Galatians, and I mean honestly, you can go through Hebrews eight and I'm out of God. We can we can just read that whole scripture and it'll break it all down. But we're gonna go to Galatians three and one. Which is an awesome example. It says, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently sent forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit of by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And he asked this question, are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? And so he began to separate those who walk in the spirit. Versus those who walk in the flesh. Those who try to please God in the spirit. Versus those who begin to try to please God in their flesh. It's a big difference. And Iranian teaching, what I'm learning is. Tend to be based off the flesh. Tend to. Make you believe that you can complete this thing by the acts and the works that you do versus the working of Christ, what he already done for us and receiving the fullness, just as he said. In Romans 10 and 4, for Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. When you begin to believe in yourself. That you can do something. Without him. This is what causes you to err. You begin to believe. That you have to complete what he's already completed. You hear. He already completed it. All we have to do. Is believe. That's it. Believe in the word. The finished word. What he did. We can't do what he did. I'm sorry. It's already been done. Not only that, but I don't even see that we would have the capacity to endure such things that he endured for us. Let's go into Hebrews 8 and 1. It says, Now a the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of 
the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou maketh make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not saith the Lord for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days saith the Lord I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people hallelujah this mind, my God. Oh, my God, my God. My God. Mm. My God. I'm sorry. My God. It just, he just brought me back to where he just said, I will put my laws into their minds. Verse 10. You know, uh, this is why we need Philippians 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is which also which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the cross, the death of the cross. Wherefore God had also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every name every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father amen amen I don't know, the Lord just, when he said, I will put my laws into their heart. And then this scripture, just, this is why we, he basically was saying, this is why we need the mind of Christ. This is why, my God. Back to Hebrews, y'all, chapter 8. I don't know. The Lord just took me away with that one. And he says, and write them in their hearts. And this is verse 10. And I will be to them a peep, a, a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. 
My God, have you seen these babies worshiping the Lord by God as babies, newborns, just with their hands up, worshiping my God, coming in, worshiping. Oh, my God. He said they're going to know me from the least to the greatest. Why? Because I'm in them. Hallelujah. His spirit recognizing his spirit. We recognize the spirit of God through his spirit that lives and lies within us. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins. And their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he, he saith a new covenant he hath made. The first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. My God. My God. My God. Hallelujah, my God is ready to vanish away. Mm. My God, I thank God for what he's doing, for his teaching, for him enlightening us, opening up our eyes to see where people come in and try to graft us back in to the letter graft us back into that old way of teaching and thinking and believing we have to remember you all Ephesians 2 and 8 it says for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The law is of works. But grace is it. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Romans 20 says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the acknowledge, the knowledge, I'm sorry, of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Once again, we have to believe unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, 
his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. Where is the boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. my God. Going to Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the same, the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So remember, he is the author. He begins the work and he finishes it. My God. Philippians. One and six saying, being confident of this very thing that he which have began, begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. He is so amazing. And I, I don't always know how he's going to take us because I'm telling you right now, some of these scriptures I did not have written, but the Holy Spirit, if you just allow him, to teach he has his own way of teaching and I just I love to sit down and and allow him to teach through his word because he wrote it he knows what he wrote wrote you know this is how he's able to tell us and that's that's how he's able to um rightly teach us how to rightly divide the word you know, I'm telling you, it's, he, he, he does the work. And we have to rely on the work of the cross. We have to rely on the work of Jesus Christ. We have to rely on what he said. His word. His word, he said, don't go back void. And so just trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him. So that he is able to direct your path. You have to acknowledge him in everything. And allow him to direct you. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him. And he will. He shall direct your path. He's able. More than able. He's more than capable of direction. Ha. Yidar bakatarari ehe. Oh, he's more than able to direct you. Oh, God, I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in this hour. Lord, we thank you, Lord God. We acknowledge you. We acknowledge your presence, oh, Lord. We acknowledge what you're doing in this hour. We acknowledge, oh, God, 
Hallelujah. How you showing, hallelujah, forth your praise. How you showing forth your people on today. God, we acknowledge you on today. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge what you're doing, God. We thank you, Father, for what you've already done. Hallelujah. I had to read this because this has come to me multiple times um, during this, during um, this podcast. And for some reason, it just kept skipping my mind. I would, I would get it and then I it would leave and this is the third time. And so I know the Lord is telling me, read this. I don't know why the enemy tried to fight it, but we going to read this right now. And maybe it was just the timing. And so I believe, because I believe in the timing of the Lord as well. So he gave it to me. He wanted me to know it's important. I want you to read this, but I want you to read this now. So here we go. Uh, this is Matthews 24 and 24. It says, for there shall arise false prophets. I mean, sorry, false Christs and false prophets and will show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect this is what gets people off a lot too because I, I hear a lot of people quoting this scripture and when they quote it they forget the part that states that if it were possible if it were possible, they would be able to, they shall deceive the very elect. If it were possible. My God, he begins this work. And I believe it with all my heart, my mind, my soul, and my spirit that he will finish it until the end. And as long as we stay in him, it sh- sh- it's not able, it can, it's not possible. He said, if it were, if it were, if it were, remember if it were, I just believe God's got you, he's got me, he's got us. And if we stay in him, I'm telling you. He is, he, it's like he's, he's showing, he's, he's transforming, he's, he's enlightening, he's showing us the, the difference between the light and the darkness. He's showing us where the people are err. Hallelujah. How we err if we, if we give in to those things. And I thank him for what he's showing me. I thank him for what he's showing you. I'm thankful for what he's doing in this hour. I'm thankful for everything that he's about to do. Hallelujah. We give him reverence. We give him praise. And we give him glory, God. We magnify your holy name. We thank you, Lord God, for this word on today. God, we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for directing us and leading us through your spirit, not by might nor by power, but Father, your P.E. Oh, through your Holy Spirit, God, we give you praise on today. We magnify your holy name for you are a great God. And there's no other God like you. God, continue to teach us, oh God. Continue to reach us, oh God. Continue to pull us out from the Oh, from those old mindsets, Holy Spirit. From those old ways of thinking, oh God. Hallelujah. And bring us up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't allow us to get caught into tradition, oh God, into the traditions even of men, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for delivering us and setting us free from old, even old habits, old bad habits, old traditional ways. Hallelujah. Old religious ways of thinking, oh God. Old, old ways of, of, of uh, a compromise even compromising hallelujah with the the things of old 
hallelujah, and not coming into the new. Father, bring us into the new, newness of life, newness of light, newness of spirit, newness, oh God, even of the mind, hallelujah. Bring forth the, the newness of mind, oh God. Bring forth the the, the uh, mind of Christ that we will think the way that he thinks and talk the way we, that he talks and, and do the things that he did. Hallelujah. Father, for the word said that greater work shall we do. So God, we, we're depending on you for the greater. Hallelujah. You are greater. Hallelujah. And through you, we can do all things. Hallelujah. Through you, God. And we thank you, Father, that we are able to do the ashantarabakandarari. Well more, way more, well more than able hallelujah to do all things through you because you worketh and you liveth and you breathe hallelujah oh god we are able to do it because you live on the inside of us hallelujah and i thank you hallelujah greater i see because there's more ha more he that the more than the the that Oh God, I thank you that you took yourself and you duplicated yourself. Hallelujah. And that you live within the inside of us. It's more than we are one. We are one through your body. We are one, oh God, through you. One body through you. Hallelujah. And I thank you, God. That we are one through Christ Jesus. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Because we are one in him, oh God. That we're able to do greater because there's more. <laughs> there's more, more, more. Hallelujah. More than just the one. Hallelujah. It's like a duplication of yourself. And I thank you, God, for what you've done through Christ Jesus, I thank you for Holy Spirit. I thank you for leading us, teaching us, and guiding us through Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that through through Holy Spirit, each one teach one. Hallelujah. The one what we don't what we don't got, the other one does. And this is how your body works. Hallelujah. This is how your body works. Hallelujah. This is how your body works. God, hallelujah, hallelujah, God, I thank you, hallelujah, that we get more revelation, hallelujah, through your spirit, hallelujah, because you give one to one in the, then uh, that other, the ashanta, the, eh. oh God, that's how your body works, and then uh, here's the other, hallelujah, and they define it even more, and they enlightening us even more, because they taking it to the other level, and then here comes another, hallelujah, and they pretty ashanta, the, eh. oh God, I thank you for what you're doing, hallelujah, in this hour. Hallelujah, don't allow us to get caught up in those things that are not of you. Hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, don't let us get caught up in error. But Father, help us to move by your spirit. God, we thank you, Father, for you being in control. Hallelujah, you have the last and the final say. Hallelujah, God, I thank you. For showing forth your glory, even on today. Your word, it don't go back void. Oh, God, we thank you for it. Oh, God, I thank you for it. I mean, I receive it in my heart. Your word, what you said, what you say about us, what you said you did. Hallelujah, through Christ Jesus, the finished work. God, I thank you for it. And I know it don't go back void. Hallelujah. But what you said, what you're doing, and what you're about to do, it shall be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. Hallelujah for working on the heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God, for causing us to be receptive. Hallelujah. To be able to receive the finished work. To be able to receive what you've already done. And hallelujah, and to be able to receive what you are doing now. God, I thank you for preparing the hearts of your people 
to know that you're able to do anything but fail. Hallelujah. There's nothing that you're unable to do. Body the Ashanta Oh God, you know the Aston Darabakanda de Ethe. Poor he that about Cantare. Poor kid that I lay ah. Low son that I buy Lisa that he ate. Oh God, your body works together. And God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah for what you're about to do. And for what you're already doing and what you've already done. God, we praise your holy name. Thank you, God, for what it is that you've done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for restitution. Thank you, Father, for uh, even reservation and preparation. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and restoration. God, we thank you for restoring us. God, we thank you for restoring us. Thank you for keeping our minds, God. Stayed on you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, for speaking to us. Thank you for opening up our ears even the more so. Even the more so, God, keep, hallelujah, keep, I hear keep pressing towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Continue to press forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we continue to press, hallelujah, God will continue to open up our eyes, our eyes and our ears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of our heart. Hallelujah. That we'll be able to receive the things of him. Our mind, hallelujah, hallelujah, will to continue to be converted, hallelujah, hallelujah, that we will have fully the mind of Christ. All things that passed away, and behold, all things new. Oh God, I thank you for the new. Hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. God, I thank you, God, for the for just working in our on our working in on us working in and on and through us hallelujah continue to work in us continue to work on our the inside first clean first the inside of the cup so that the outside will be cleaned also god i thank you for cleansing the inside of the cups holy spirit cleanse the ashantarabaha lo Cleanse on that inside, hallelujah. The cleansing of the washing of the word, hallelujah. Poor kids out of our the essay. Oh, your word is washing and cleansing, hallelujah. The inner parts, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even down deep in our soul, fire that of our Oh, God, I thank you for your holy fire. Hallelujah. That cleanses. Hallelujah. That purifies. Oh, God, that washes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for what you're about to do even now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank him for what he's about to do. I thank him for this retreat that he has um, placed in my heart for us to come together. For those women who want to be restored, those women, hallelujah, that um, want uh, just even a new experience, that want uh, to be revived. God is doing a reviving in the inside. Hallelujah. I even know he's going to do healing. Even the healing is going to take place, and I believe it with all my heart that he's showing up and he's showing out, y'all. He's already doing it, I'm telling you, even in these podcasts and and, uh, just just the revelation and just what he's, the the teaching is like he's teaching even differently, you know, as we just obey the Holy Spirit. He's bringing forth, he's bringing us even into one accord. And he's been doing that. And I thank him for that as well. I just thank God because he's in control. 
There's nobody like our God. No other God like our God. I'm telling you. You could look. You, like that song I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. You could look if you want. But I'm going to tell you right now. You won't be able to find what you're looking for. Unless you go through him. God is awesome. He is the author. He is the finisher of our faith. And there's nothing that he's unable to do. God bless you. And I pray that he will continue to keep you. His shalom will be upon you. Hallelujah. That he may give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, he will restore you. Those that need to be restored. Those that have been broken. Broken hearted. Hallelujah. That he will hallelujah, bring forth his healing. Hallelujah. In the hearts of his people. Hallelujah. That he will bring us on one, on, on one accord with his spirit. Hallelujah, that he'll continue to do a mighty work in us and through us, y'all, in Jesus' mighty name. And until next time, God bless you. Amen, amen.